It's the Poetic Truth Show. We're back in the studio. That was Brown Sugar by D'Angelo. And now, um, as promised, we'll be talking about Drake. We had a bit of a lively discussion about it uh, while the music was playing. But basically, Drake is coming to Birmingham at the Genting Arena in March. His tickets went on sale on Thursday, which, as you're aware, is a good few days before most people's payday. January is often the hardest time of the year for people, right after Christmas. And then Drake comes along. He's being support supported by Tory Lanes on the tour. And his tickets are pretty expensive. I looked online. There were a batch of cheap tickets, tickets for £52, but those sold out straight away which means that most fans are left now having to pay between 70 and 170 pounds for a ticket. And as with most um, ticketed events, the tickets will be doubled in price nearer to the date and resold by ticket sellers. And I'm just wondering, is it inconsiderate for Drake to charge this much money so close to Christmas? And can the average fan afford it? Well, I don't know. I just don't know if Jesus will be attending. That, that sort of price has got to be holy water, holy water itself for people to buy because I don't, that 150 pounds is it is steep. It's it is steep, but it is the music business, and people will pay for it. People will pay for it, but is it right? Do you think Drake should have some consideration for the fans, particularly the ones that may come from communities that don't have that amount of cash to just spend on a, on a concert ticket? And unfortunately, this is the harsh reality that his music and what he's doing isn't for them. And that's just that's the reality of it. It's the music business. If you can sell yeah. tickets for 150 and people will pay for it, if it's the middle class or the upper class buying it, then, but think about it, it's not even that. People will just scrape all their money together. Even if they've got to go there and sit there saliva for the whole thing, <laughs> they'll be in the crowd chanting to his music. So it, it's... it's that, dry mouth. Yeah, they will. <laughs> and I think that, I don't, I can't say it's wrong. It's just what it is. If, if I can put something on sale for, if I can sell a cocktail for 27 pounds, people are going to buy it. Might as well, I guess. Yeah. You can't come and look at me and be like, oh, Gabriel's tea, 27 for a <laughs> cocktail. Well, people are paying for it. So it is sad, because obviously it's marginalising those who can't afford it. Yeah. But the question is that it will sell out. It will. Will you be, will you be one of the people going to the concert? Do you think you'll get yourself a ticket? No, but I don't, I don't care for Drake or Tory Lanez that much to go, if that makes sense. So who, what artists would you spend £150 to go and see? Any artists? Who would you spend that money on? Wow. Nah, do you know what? I, I can't. I can't. Well, in this day and age now, yeah, I can't think of anyone. I can't think of anyone I've been to with the Pantheon. I can't think of anyone. Not even if like comedians. I went and saw Chris Rock mm. last year. That was only like forty quid, mm. fifty quid. But if it was hundred and fifty, I don't know if I would have went. It depends. If you're saying there's a collective, so for instance, um, I don't mind going to say a festival, for instance, where there's yeah. going to be made four artists that I like. So I think yeah. the argument is, is that, would you pay 70 to see Drake alone? You would. Not you, but most people would. Yeah. Would you pay 70 to see Tory Lanez alone? Most people would who are fans of those. So if you're a fan of Tory Lanez and Drake, add the two 70s together, that's 140. Yeah. So if someone said to me, I don't know, who's my favourite, I'm not really into me that much now, but if someone said, I don't know, Meat Mill, Maybe, and let's say, I don't know, I'm trying to think of a singer now, let's say LMA. Yeah. Okay, so those are the two albums I've been bumping right now. So if someone said the two of those were in concert and it was £100 for the ticket, I'd pay £50 to see um, uh, me, no. I'd pay 50 to go and see LMA. So, so you do I, it. I'll pay £100. So, so it just depends on how you personally feel about the artist, whether people think it's acceptable yeah. to pay. Yeah. But then there's going to be a lot of people that are literally scrimping together every last penny they've got to go and see Drake. Some people's kids might not have lunch that week. Mm -hmm. School shoes might not be bought that week. And that's you might you have to walk to work that's and have why. no lunch for the rest of the month that's because why. you spent all your money on Drake tickets. And that's why you should not follow fashion. <laughs> and that's why I say stop watching other people. Like, I always stay in my lane. And I know my lane's not Tories. So <laughs> I always stay in my lane. And, and if I can't afford something, I'll just watch on everyone's Instagram story. Like, yeah, and you know you'll see it. There. You know you'll see the grainy footage afterwards yeah. through the back of someone's head in the shop. Yeah, that's exactly <laughs> what I'll be doing now. It's a music business, so uh, is, it, is it wrong? No, it's not wrong. People are paying for it. Yeah, but how much is a concert really worth? Like, do you think concerts in general, do you feel like you get your money's worth? Because you're just going to see someone mm -hmm. 
watch someone dancing and singing? Is it for me worth it anyway? Yes and no. For instance, if I'm paying hundred pounds to see Drake, the production get be ten out of ten. Yeah. And some people don't realise how much goes into production. Because sometimes all you think you just go to an arena and that's it, no. The backdrops, the lighting, everything that goes into it. If it's if he's putting on a show, yeah. then yes, no problem. But if I'm just going there and there's no band, he's just there with his DJ, then there's gonna be problems. Like I'm going on stage. Like well, this is my concert, now we're all gonna be on stage. <laughs> because you've charged me 150 pounds and you've all you just got a DJ. I wanna see your orchestra, I wanna see the guy waving the one. I wanna see everything. Yeah, so it just depends on, on the production. But the best concert I've probably been to. It's gonna sound crazy. It's a so solid one that they did. They did a reunion really? in the O2 about three or four years ago because I grew up on their music. Yeah. So when I went to the concert, it was nostalgia for me. Yeah. So that was probably the best concert. The vibe there was crazy, but that's because I'm, I grew up in the garage era. Yeah. So okay. that was, and I paid, I think it was like, is it 30 quid for the ticket? Jeez. It was 30 quid, yeah. 30 quid. Was this in Wolverhampton? No, this was in on the O2 in London. They did a, oh, a reunion okay. in the Indigo O2. So that yeah. was the best concert I would say that I've been to because I grew up on their music. So seeing so you all just on stage, just I was to be there. Every, I knew every song. I was the biggest fan. <laughs> I threw my t-shirt on stage. I was the <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I think it, I don't think it's wrong. People are paying for it, and it's business end of the day. And I'm into business, so if someone's gonna pay one fifty for a ticket, make them pay it. I guess more for the people who will pay yep. pay that price. So um, moving on from Drake, we're going to head into our final topic and then we'll go into the music and when we come back we'll be getting to know a bit more about Sion Gabriel himself. So um, the third topic is about chaos and the ballroom under lockdown yesterday afternoon. So let me just set the scene for you. Imagine you went to town yesterday, just a casual afternoon, you thought you'd maybe pop into the Halifax, go and sort out your money, do some banking, and then you step out of the Halifax, you think it looks a bit busy, busier than usual, and then before you know it, you're surrounded by 8,000 people getting crushed and pushed, security are there, manhandling people out of the way, and then you finally get out of the ballroom and try to get home, and you're stuck in traffic in town for five hours. And I'm sure you're all wondering why and what it was that caused this level of a shutdown. And you'll probably be as surprised to know as I was that it was all because of an appearance by a YouTuber called James Charles, who is a makeup artist from America. He's from New York. And he came to the ballroom yesterday to open a, a new makeup store called Morph. So he was, the whole ballroom was packed full of people, all three floors. Shoppers couldn't get in and out or out of the shops. They had to call the police in to control the crowds. There were reports of people being crushed by the crowds. And it just turned into mayhem. And the guy was only there for 30 seconds while he cut a ribbon in front of the shop. And then he smiled, waved politely to the crowds. And then that was it. There was a competition where 250 people got to have a meet and greet with him. But that was already determined before Saturday. So the 8,000 people that turned up to get a 30 second glimpse of him basically just wasted their time going into town. But I just couldn't believe the amount of people that would turn up to see a makeup artist cut a ribbon in front of the shop. It's crazy. So, so because of contour, yeah, that's how I had to walk. That is crazy. Yes, no, yes, I didn't understand what's happening. So because of contour, <laughs> I had to walk all the way from New Street Station yeah. to where I live. I had to do a 30 minute walk in that cold. Yeah. Every Uber cancelled. And I didn't really? even know what it was. Yeah, that is why. That is okay. why. So, so it was him. Okay. It was all because right. of him. I landed on the scar on contour. <laughs> Alright, cool. There were just thousands of women screaming. I've looked at the videos online and people were having meltdowns. People were upset, like devastated, because they didn't get to meet him. Some people had made him gifts that they wanted to give to him, but security were just having none of it. But yeah, he's just a makeup artist with 25 million followers, I think, online. Okay, followers and subscribers, and this is the first time I think he's been to the UK. Okay. But what it made me think about was celebrity, and what does it even mean to be a celebrity anymore? Because there was a time when celebrity was people like big actors, Robert De Niro, Al Pacino, Marilyn Monroe, or just Denzel Washington, Whitney Houston. But now you've got James the Makeup Artist. 
and just before Christmas there's a little girl called Tiana. Mm -hmm. um, she's a, a British child YouTuber. Oh, she's yeah, got yeah. millions of followers online and there were similar scenes at the boring then. Mm -hmm. And she basically just opens toys and talks about them. But people are famous for that now. So has the meaning of celebrity changed? Is it a good thing? Is it a bad thing? Um, I think it's because we're in the digital era now. We've always been but so more now because of social media. Which is good because now it, you're allowed to create your own platform and you've got to remember that we create these celebrities. When I say we as in we as a society, as the people out there, because um, if we give them a platform, if they create a platform, we decide to watch what they're doing and bring more followers and subscribers. We make them who they yeah. are. And when you look at reality TV for instance, there's celebrities now who just went on a reality show and they're now celebrated. And, and they're now Kim Kardashian. Yeah, which is which is <laughs> which is fine. I guess if someone likes what you're doing then by all means, if you can, everything now is money, whether you like it or not, it's, it it's advertising market and it money. Is. And that's what social media has brought, which is it's a good thing because even as yourself, as a presenter, you use social media as well, don't you? Yes. And you know, give it a, a few months, you're going to be one of the biggest presenters there is, and oh. people are going to be celebrating you, and then people are going to be like, oh wow, has she done that? It's just. And then before I know it, there'll be 8,000 people at the ball ring screaming yep. my name. Exactly. <laughs> that's, that's <laughs> I, I love it. I like the fact that. Um, use social media so much more. It's free marketing, free advertising, and it's powerful. It so, is. So I do, I, I can't stress enough how much, how important social media is if you're trying to be an artist, a singer, radio presenter, someone who's going to be blending contour, eyeliner, and mascara. Because yeah. he's got 25 million followers, and you've got to think about how much money that generates. Yes. And that's what it is. Look how that much helps. money it generates. So I see no problem with it. It's just the fact that I had to walk. <laughs> it's cold. <laughs> Do you think we're becoming obsessed with following people though? It's kind of almost like borderline worship of mm -hmm. just regular people. Now the only issue I have with social media is the fact that people don't understand that all we post is our highlights. Yeah, so I did speak about this yeah, last week. And I hate the fact that people look at people's lives and then feel that they're not worth anything because yeah. so, so I make a point of saying when I have a bad day, I make a point of saying when I have a good day, I make a point of not because I need to, but for anyone who looks at my platform and thinks I've made it, I've arrived, nah mate, it's not.